From video games to the big screen, why does it always end up being a trash heap of a failure? I think we can all agree that we'd love for our favourite games to be put onto the big screen, either TV shows or movies, but actually kept the same story as the game. Except that's not reality. In reality, we get this. A mess, a disgrace, whatever you want to call it. First, I'm going to list all the main games that were turned to movies and TV shows that ended up being absolute shows. So to start off with a banger, the live action Mario Bros movie, known as the first film to be based off of a video game. It was released in 1993 and it was a massive failure, not even reaching the amount of the film's budget which was 42 to 48 million dollars. Even though the film had a few good moments and good ideas put into it, including the goomers in the elevator scene, which is probably the best scene in the movie because the rest of it is absolute trash. It was literally a shell of the Mario franchise, with all the characters being nothing like the originals, not even Mario and Luigi. And it was if they tried to make the Mario Bros movie into its own separate thing, making it loosely based off of the source material. But it seems as if everyone equally decided how lifeless and trashy the movie actually was, with both critics and the audience rated it 29% on Rotten Tomatoes, which is crazy because the critics and audience are never on the same level. Now we get onto the fabled Mortal Kombat movies. Now yes, there were a few good memes, sayings and ideas that came out of Mortal Kombat and Mortal Kombat Annihilation, especially one of my favourites. Your brother's soul is mine. But apart from that, the movies were mostly known to be absolute failures. Even the reboot from 2021, which was a success in the box office and had 86% on Rotten Tomatoes from audiences, was hated by fans. Which is a thing that happens a lot of the time. The audience rating on the movie can be high, but it doesn't mean the actual fan base of the series like it. And one of the big main reasons for people hating the movie was because it focused on a new irrelevant character that no one cared for. It was a new guy called Cole Young, who was kind of a basic and boring ass character. Now onto the Halo series, featuring the new original character, Master Cheeks. This is the best example for when the writers and creators have no love for the original source material. Not understanding the characters correctly and having no idea why people loved Halo in the first place. They just ripped it apart and be like, let's put this into a, a series. Add some stupid little characters. Job done. The only actual good and entertaining parts of the series were the action scenes, which weren't actually that bad. But when it came to the story and dialogue, I'm not going to lie, that stuff was some actual dinosaur doo-doo blood. I mean, part of this series focused on this kid who became one of the main characters, who just has a really bland backstory and just really isn't interesting. I don't know why they do this with this series. Try and focus on other characters like the Mortal Kombat one and this one. Focus on other characters that people don't care about and don't know and think they're going to love it when you should be making it all about that main character that people can actually, you know, look forward to seeing on the screen and be like, whoa, what's happening here? Where's where's my boy Master Cheeks gone? Now for one that I really, really wanted to like. Well, I did in season one and it just went downhill from there, bro. This is another one where the writers completely destroyed their own show by not following the original source and trying to create something new, which never works. I mean, if you're going to create something new, make a new series. That's not what people want from The Witcher. They want The Witcher, not The Witcher with a new storyline with something that we don't really care that much about. And in this case, it's rumored that the writers actually hated The Witcher's source material and they made fun of the books. And it's like, if you're going to be making that and you're making fun of it and saying how trash it is, then obviously that is not going to go well. I mean, how, how was that let through the doors to be put on that? Netflix. They ended up ripping up a really good show from the ground up and losing the best actor for the role, which was Henry Cavill. I mean, he was perfect for Geralt, but then they had to go and ruin it. And now, for some reason, they're trying to cast Chris Hemsworth. They're trying to swap out the actor midway through the show. Bro, that's not going to work. People are just going to hate on it even more. Like, one of the best parts of the show was the casting of the characters. For the most part, they did a really good job. Like, with Siri and everyone. Perfect casting, I'd say. I mean, yes, I would have preferred it if Mark Hamill played Vesemir, but the dude from Killing Eve, Kim Bodnia, still did a decent-ass job, so I didn't mind it. I mean, this series could have been amazing if it had better writers and it was treated better. I think it would have gone on for, like, six to eight seasons. But nope, we are not lucky in life to get that series that we all wanted. And we get Shovel This Pilot. Now for another massive Netflix failure, which is a, a pattern which seems to be happening here, is the Resident Evil series. Honestly, my first thoughts of it, they should have just made Lance Reddick the main character and the main guy. Because he's an amazing actor and now, now they've lost that chance because my boy was taken. Why? Why God? Why would you do this? But yeah, Resident Evil. It was an original idea which didn't have any legs to stand on it at the start and it completely failed. I mean, the creator said he wanted to create, I don't know, like 13 seasons or something like that. It'll probably be up on screen how many, but then it was canceled straight after season one because it was terrible. I mean, that's what happens when you create characters that are unbearable and nobody cares for at all. I tell the truth, I couldn't even watch through all of it. It was so bland and the writing was so bloody atrocious that I just watched a review, which is probably what you should do as well. Now for me, I'd say it's maybe best to leave them 
as video games and not try and milk more out of the franchise by making it into something that most people wouldn't want. But I'd say if the series has a good team and a cast behind it with a love for the source material put into the mix, I think it can become something that people who love the game will treasure. And then people will watch even if they have no idea about the games, just because it's a good series in itself. Like for example, Jack Black has recently said that he wants a Red Dead Redemption movie and he thinks it would rival HBO's The Last of Us series. Now if that were to become a real thing, I think me and many other people would cream their pants. Now the people who make these shows are mainly doing it because they know the shows will have high viewership because of the amount of fans the games have. And they know that it'll just eat up anything that comes from that game, like out outsourced anything. And they are leeching off of that. But sometimes it would just be better if they made their own idea and their own series, which isn't how they should be handled. Now the way they should be handled is how The Last of Us show was handled, which turned out to be one of the biggest successes from a game turned to a series. Now there are a few reasons why this show turned out to be a massive success with audiences. Number one, the creator of the game was involved, Neil Druckmann, which is always a good sign. It means that they're going to keep on the right track if the person decides to keep the same way. Because if they decide to change the story and make it into a completely different thing, then that's still fine because it's them creating their new path for their own game that they made. Number two, they kept close to the original story of the game, but then changed parts to mix it up a little bit and give the series its own little personality and not just a straight up rip off from the game, which some people would love, but would also feel uninspired. But it can always be a good thing, adding a little bit of light to something that is already bright enough to light up a freaking Toys R Us. Sometimes though it doesn't work because the video game was made to just be that, a video game. And making it into a show or a movie doesn't make that much sense for that certain thing. But not everything was really built to live in other areas of media. Sometimes it's just good to leave it as it is, to keep the memory and nostalgia of that thing alive for the fans who love it and not kill it by creating a show for fans to remember it by instead and for that to be people's first introduction to the actual series or game. Now a massive movie that many people hype for is the animated Super Mario Bros movie. Not to be confused with the live action Super Mario Bros movie which is on separate sides of the scale bro. And why would you say the reason for that is? Because I've seen the marketing and the trailers for this and I say it's probably because they've kept true to the source material and the original games which is what people want in most cases. Everything in the game and everything about it to be brought over and put into that movie or that series and not just little bits picked off and put that into a series and added new stupid characters. They've shown that everything you can see in the game is in the movie, even Mario Kart bro. But then what they've done which has got even more people interested is putting their own twist on it. A new theme which is a homage to the original, a cast of amazing characters which nobody would ever thought to have played these characters. I mean Chris Pratt as Mario, what the frick? But then you hear what his voice is now for Mario and it sounds pretty good bro. I mean there's a clip where he sounds exactly like the one of the original voice actors Charge Martinet. Coopers. Now when the trailer first came out, people took the rip out of Chris Pratt for how bad his voice was, just doing a crappy Brooklyn accent. Mushroom Kingdom, here we come! But then, out of the shadows, Universal gave Super Mario Bros the sonic treatment, giving the fans what they needed, keeping Chris Pratt but improving his voice, making it a lot closer to the original Mario voice, which people want from Mario. And Chris Pratt even said himself, there were so many hearts and souls dedicated to making sure it wasn't just a cash grab. And now finally the movies come out, and bro it wasn't. I mean everyone I've heard has loved it, and it's a massive success, literally towering over Disney. I mean in a way, video games have their own souls to them. People play these games because the amount of effort and imagination put into the game and with most games you can feel the creativity and soul seeping out of it and it literally drags you into the world making you feel what the characters feel and you actually believe it believe what's happening you become part of that world yourself that's when you know it's a good game when these games are ripped apart and turned into a shabby show or movie it mostly feels soulless because these companies and corporations just see money and at the end of the day that's all they want money it's all they live off endless money grabs being greedy until they have every last drop and that's not the kind of people we want to be in charge of these movies and series. Like the kid who whenever he sees money drop on the floor he ain't seen nabs it and takes it for himself. You know who you are. More of the story is kids, choose creativity over greed and you will be rewarded with not being called a money <laughs> It's been Ramos, click this video for another life lesson on why the world is going to end and why everyone is going to- Coopers!